All right. I'm going to have my bride come up here. She and I are going to share with you tonight. So I'm going to let her go first because she's the best part. I think you're on. She was singing. Am I on? You're on. I betcha. I just, you know, I looked up 100 real quick this evening. It means children of the promise. Amen. And you're here, which means there's a promise over you. I think this, this is number one and we're entering into a new season. Ten is the number of completion. This is, this is a complete completion. So you need to stand in that and remember that. And hopefully what we share with you tonight might help you stand in that or maybe give you another perspective in it. But even if it doesn't, we just, we just ask that you hear what God wants you to hear tonight. Just what God wants you to hear. Don't listen to us. As good looking as she is, you still need to listen to God more. So, <laughs> I'm going to prophesy. I'm going to get a smooch for that later. <laughs> just planting seeds, honey. Oh, just planting seeds. That's all I'm doing. <laughs> so I'm going to be quiet for a bit, and you bring it up. You okay. Ready? All right. Wow, the presence. Thank you, worship team. Oh, Amen. my gosh. Amen. But also thank you guys for who are here because you came with expectancy that you're going to have an encounter with God. And he loves that and he responds. So thank you for bringing each one of you that expectancy to have an encounter with God because that's part of the gathering together. You come with your expectancy with God and I come with mine and it turns up the volume. And sometimes I can't hear for myself. I need the person on my left to hear him for me or the person on my right. Or like tonight, between worship and Pastor Al, you pretty much our whole message has been taught. You know, it, it's obvious that God has something he's serious about. Um, and, and it's been that way all week. God, God's been serious this week. I don't know how, how many of you were here last night. Okay. And how many were here Wednesday night? All right. The whole push is very much what the last song was. We want you, God, and nothing else. The purpose of revival is we want you, God, and nothing else. I'm going to focus on you and where you're taking me and where you want to go. Not where I want to go, where you want to go. Um, I feel like this is an opportunity that God is calling us to rise up higher with him. We overcome by the blood of the lamb and the power of our testimony. And we, we understand blood of the lamb pretty well. And, and I think we think we understand testimony, but, but I'm going to come at it from maybe a little different area or a different avenue. Really, what is a testimony? It's our story. It's our story of how God came for us, what challenges we faced, how God either rescued us or empowered us to overcome. Right? God met me here. And we need our staff. God met me here. God met me here. God met me here. Right? Right? So we can remind ourselves when we're not hearing him well, he's still here. He's still here. Each person here, I believe, over the course of revival, as they have engaged with what God has been bringing forth, has faced places in their heart, mind, will, and emotions, spirit, soul, and body, where they've needed God's touch. I know I have. I have. I know Ed has. I know our family has. 
That's why we're here, because we're hungry for more of what God has. Not, not for what he can do, but for who he is. God, I think, is calling us in this season, he's calling us higher to activate his called out ones to move into the fullness of his presence and live out, each one of us, our God-created identity, destiny, and purpose. If you're thinking that your God-created identity, destiny, and purpose is I'm going to get to live the nice little happy life with the white picket fence and... The author and finish of our faith should probably, you know, write it that way. That'd be easier, right? It would be easier. Yeah. Right? Why can't we just live a happy, healthy, prosperous life? Right. No problem. Well, and and that's just it. Because stories are funny things. Um, Some of you may not know this, but I have spent the last five years covering the Colorado Avalanche, which is a hockey team. As I sit down to write, I can go about it two ways. One, I map out exactly where the story's going, which characters are going to do what, with who, when, where, how they're going to interact together, and then I can build the tension, right? We've all been in basic English class, build the tension, and then have a planned resolution. This is where it's going. I've mapped it all out. It's down. And that can be a good story. But the second way, the way that I really enjoy writing and it's a lot more interesting to me, is I kind of have a rough idea of where the story starts and then who the characters are, and then I get a general idea of kind of where I think it's going, and then I let the story evolve as the characters and the situations develop a life of their own. And it frequently takes the story into unexpected places And it's almost always better than anything I would have planned. Even when I'm doing hockey writing, I can look at all the statistics, and I do do that. I'm kind of known for looking at the statistics, but not, not for just what the statistics are. That's just a number. I get to say, hey, you know what this might indicate? This player seems to be really doing good with this, and they weren't before. And then I can build a story around that statistic. What's the heart of the story? What what do the numbers, what does your story say about what you've overcome? We're not supposed to go around saying, hey, I got hurt and I can't play and I'm frustrated. I mean, you can say that for a moment and God's okay with that, but we're not supposed to stay there. That's not the purpose. God has each one of us have gone through things that we have had to overcome. Why? Because those challenges equip us for the work of the kingdom. Each one of you has had unique experiences, unique challenges, and you have unique giftings. We're not to sit here and say, hey, this defined me. No. Circumstances do not get to define us. Only God. Only God. There's been a lot of talk about the refiner's fire. The purpose of the fire is to get rid of the, I have these wounds. And they define me. It's to get healing and allow God to strip that off of you. Because with those wounds can sometimes come a victim mentality. And I got to be honest, in this time and in this season, a victim mentality is going to take you out. We cannot afford a victim mentality in the kingdom. We've had people praying for revival. What does revival mean? What does it mean? We had great, great teaching this week about what revival is preparing us for. We're in a rare season where God is calling us up into more of his story. And we have the opportunity to partner with him in a unique way. And I think maybe maybe 
probably not you people here, but there are some people who don't understand the power of this season, the importance of this season. Pastor Risa preached wonderfully about the need for repentance, reminding us that we walk with a holy Lord, and he's calling us to a greater holiness. And we have work to do to separate our, ourselves from the sins of omission and commission. That means the sins that we intentionally did and the ones that are unintentional, right? Why, why would God do that? He, he's not mean. He loves you. It's an honor. It is an honor to go be called up into another level with him where his holiness convicts us of, hey, I've got more to go. There is more I can be. And here's the cool thing. The higher up we go, the closer we get to the people we've always wanted to be. Does that make sense? That's what the 100 days have been doing for us. I don't know about you guys. That's what the 100 days have been doing for us. We get faced with a choice. Am I going, I get hurt. I get something to bump me. What am I going to do with that? What am I going to do with that? Oh, wow. Really? I got to deal with you about that again? I'm so tired of that particular wound coming back up. And God's saying, yeah, so am I. <laughs> so am I. It's holding you back. And I need you to move. So let's talk about that. Let's get to the root of that. Take care of it so you can move with me in greater measure. Right? It's an invitation to greater intimacy. Pastor Crystal and Pastor Brooke urged us to listen for the sound of the mighty rushing wind. That we can approach God's throne with expectancy, hungry for more of him. And without, this is really important in this season, without a religious spirit. We need to be open to however Holy Spirit wants us to move, ready for however God wants to touch us. And we're here to talk about why. Because it's time for all of us to rise up. You, me, all of us. We're part of a much bigger story, and there are kingdom things that we get to be about. Time is short. We have an opportunity to fight for the kingdom, take ground from the enemy, and establish more of God's sovereignty on the earth. So I'm here to tell you this. The good news is, you were made for such a time as this. Everything that you have encountered has uniquely prepared you for what your place is on the wall. Amen. What ground you're going to take for the kingdom. It's time to shed the grave clothes. No matter how comfortable they are. And embrace the new. No matter how scary that may seem. We get to be a part of the best kind of story where the author allows us to help shape the story. It's an honor and it's a privilege, but it also requires things of us. We get to choose whether or not we're going to partner with that story. We have the chance to reclaim lost territory in our lives and move into more of the identity, destiny, and purpose that God had intended for us. If we'll do the work. We've heard a lot about the refiner's fire. We talked about that. That's what you guys have been going through. That's what we've all been going through. I've been going through that. Ed's been going through that. Our, our family has been going through that. Really fun when lockdown with all five of us going through that. Woo! Thank you, God. Party on Jesus. <laughs> Woo, yeah. <laughs> I have a joke. There's a kid who's been wanting a pony. Walks into a barn, and all there is manure. And his dad's like, you need you to shovel out the shed. And the kid says, hallelujah. And his dad's going, why are you so excited? And he said, because with this much poop, 
there's a darn good horse in here somewhere. <laughs> With this much opposition, there is a treasure on the other side because the enemy is lazy. If you weren't about something for the kingdom, you would not be facing opposition. Right? He'll just let you keep stewing in your own stuff. But no, no, God says, come higher, come higher. And that's the purpose of the refining fire, which Pastor Al preached like a good, I don't know, 15 minutes of my message and five. Well done, by the way. <laughs> Nicely done. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. And it is the verse I pulled up for that is Malachi 3.3, 3, where God will sit as a refiner and purifier of the silver. That sounds great. I get to be silver. It's wonderful. No. The process isn't comfortable for the silver. If you're not comfortable, rejoice. Rejoice. Because there's a God refining you. There is a God refining you. He, the silversmith, has us. The, the interesting thing about the process of refining is the silversmith has to stay there the whole time. He can't just set the oven on boil, right? Like we do with hot water. I'm going to go fix other preparations while I'm waiting for the water to get hot. In the refining fire, he's got to be there all the time. So whether you're feeling like it or not, God is with you every moment in this season. And as the dross keeps coming out, he's removing it. If we let him. If we let him. Because we get to choose whether or not we're going to participate in the process. Right? God's going to allow us in the refining process to be put to the test. And he's going to use those trials we're enduring to do a work in us. Some of the things that are going to be consumed by that fire are going to be dear to us. Some of them are very dear to us. They weren't bad. God's not saying he did anything wrong or that those things aren't valuable. He's just saying they're not for this time. And if I keep holding on to those old things, then I'm not open to the new. Right? I've got to release the draw. Some of those minerals, they're valuable. They'll get used for other things. But in this time and in this season... I need to continue to allow God to refine us. And again, we're being refined to greater reflect his image. Now, how I'm going to reflect his image and how somebody else is going to reflect his image, that's going to be different, right? That's not a problem. That's a good thing. Because I got to tell you, when I'm in the trenches... I want to be with a company of other people who have been through the fire. Amen. Pastor Brooke and Pastor Crystal talked about our Philippine trip. <laughs> and the outpouring was amazing. Amazing. And the warfare was... Some, uh, amazing. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah, that's a good word. Uh -huh. Amazing. Let me give you an idea. You know that picture? For those of you here last night, Brooke and Crystal showed a picture. I'm sorry to interrupt you, babe. No, go for it. Showed a picture of this girl on the floor who you, you, like had this face. Oh, there's Jesus. I got to grab him type of thing. That was my wife's fault, by the way. Um, when we landed on CQ or Island. Yeah, I know, but. Uh, when we landed on CQR Island, our first night there, we, CQR was supposed to be the resort hotel. Right? We're going to this resort hotel. It was a nice hotel. It's a nice place. We're, I'm not complaining about that place at all. But when Jamie and I, okay. But our first night when Jamie and I got there to go to our room, 
the, the, if this is the doorway, the base of the doorway, a good 8, 10, 12 inches high, was just covered in bugs. Not a couple bugs. It was, and, it, and it came out, right? Literally thousands of bugs up against the door. When we moved into the room, there are literally thousands of bugs all over the room. All over right? our floor. They're on our toothbrushes. They are everywhere. They're on, you could not walk without stepping on something. The shower had them all over the place. Our room was full. And there was a demonic picture over the bed. Oh, yeah, we had fun. It was supposed to be like the shrimp, but it, I mean, we looked at it and we're like, no, that's not right. <laughs> and so we went to the front desk and they're like, well, we have a can of raid for you. They made no effort to help. We had, we had, there was no other rooms in the place at all. And so we spent, I don't know how many hours cleaning things. We got a broom. I mean, we were just, we were sweeping bugs out of there for several hours, just trying to get the place not, ugh, Right? Now, here's the thing. I have a great wife. She's very patient. She's very kind. But you do not want her mad. And when she got mad, hell got scared. Because she, it's witchcraft island. CQR literally means witchcraft island. And she kind of ha- she had a brush with witchcraft when she was younger, so she has this. When she gets around the smell of it, she's just like, "No!" <laughs> a little, a little battle. Yeah, I'm ready to take it out. I just don't yeah. Like she it. just doesn't tolerate it. And so, for the next couple of days, that's all it was. I mean, just we were warfare, warfare, warfare. constant Prayer. warfare. Praying down. in the spirit. We're bringing kingdom down. We're playing worship music in our room. What, for the rest of the week, when we left the room, I left my iPad in there playing praise and worship music on a loop. The bugs never came back. By the second day, they were all gone. They were all gone. That's God, but that's our choice to partner with him. We planted our flag. Yeah. Sorry to interrupt. No, no, no. That was where I was yeah. going. It was warfare for us. And part of that warfare was we're going through this and nobody else on the team is. Not like that anyway. Not like that. They had their own battles. They warfare. had their own battles. I'm not saying they didn't. I'm not saying that. But I'm saying we're trying to say we walked in, the floor moved. It was moving in all of these different directions. And everybody else is going, I have a beautiful view of the ocean. Our biggest challenge is we've got three of us in one room. I am so happy for you. We had, we had 3,000, so we beat them. Yeah. <laughs> right? I could have been offended. I was angry, but I could have been offended. And here's one of the agreements we made ahead of time. We were not going to allow in strife, division, or offense. And I recognized the enemy was trying to bring a twist. So it was warfare to not be offended. That's just, I'm telling on me. It was warfare to not be offended. It was warfare to not bring in strife. It was warfare to extend grace. They didn't, they just don't get it. It's okay. They don't get it. It's all right. This is, I guess this is our battle. This is our battle. In the refining fire, when God is removing things, the enemy is going to try to get you out of the fire. You have to choose to stay in, man. It is not easy. I do not like it. But I can tell you this. God is gracious because I loved everybody on our Philippines team. So I didn't, I didn't want anything to create a problem there. Does that make sense? I loved them. But because everybody was battling each one, and I remember sitting at a table and uh, someone said, I'm really feeling disqualified. And I said, me too. Me too. Wildly disqualified. And they're going, you feel like that? I'm like, oh, yeah. And they're like, and then suddenly everybody else in the table, oh, me too. 
Me too. It was a spiritual assault. Thank God for intercessors, right? Because the intercessors, them praying helped reveal a plot of the enemy to create a problem. To shut us down. This is the refiner's fire, guys. This is my testimony about what happened to me in the fire. What happened to us in the fire? What happened to our Philippines team? I promise you there's a place in my heart for those people like no one else. Because I had to fight for it. That's right. Right? I had to get to a point where my heart was lined up with God's heart regardless of what it cost me personally. That's what the refiner's fire is about in this season. It isn't about, I, I have, mm, I could have stood on, I have all of these years of experience. I could have stood on a resume. But that doesn't do anything. My resume doesn't do anything if I don't have the right heart. On a fire team, we are overwhelmed and humbled by the heart of the people who have volunteered to serve. And it's not just the fire team. It's the fire sentries. It's everybody here. It's the whole congregation. It's the heart isn't about what's my right. What's, I have this incredible resume. That's not the season. You're out of season. You are just out of season. I appreciate that. I'll take one person hungry for God and what he wants to accomplish in this moment over any resume. Amen. Any resume. Any. I, I incl we include the 12 apostles with that. Any resume. Because you've got to have gone through the fire and you have to keep staying in the fire to be hungry for God's heart so you can pour out that to other people. Otherwise, it's all about me. What can I do? Right? We chose team, and we were, there, there was battle, right? We chose team. You have an opportunity to be called up and not dwell on the, wow, I have a mess. Because we did have a mess. We had to take care of our mess. I'm not saying don't take care of your mess. I'm saying don't let the mess get in the way of the purpose behind it. I was upset because I saw that the enemy was trying to create a problem. And you know who I really got mad at? The enemy. And you know what I got to do? I got to pray people into the kingdom. Amen. There is no better way to push back on the enemy than to say, I am going to fight for every person on this team. I am going to fight for what God has on this team. I'm going to fight for what God has in ministry. I'm going to fight for our pastors. That is what... We're being called into in this season. It's a the, fight. It's a fight. It's a fight. We talk a lot about in the refiner's fire, we get to choose to stay or not. But we, we, we miss in the dry bones. We've been talking a lot about the dry bones, right? The breath of God, the wind of God's coming in. We had the wind Yesterday, for me, it was like the breath of God breathing on all of our dry bones. But Ezekiel doesn't stop there. In chapter 37, prophesy to the breath, prophesy, son of man, and say to the breath, thus says the Lord God, come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe on these slain that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and breath came into them, and they lived, and they stood upon their feet, and this is what we need to pay attention to, an exceedingly great army. If he's bringing the breath, what are we supposed to do? Rise up and fight. Rise up and fight. What are we fighting? We're fighting for the kingdom. It is an honor. It is a privilege. There are people who are our forefathers who prayed for, to be here for this moment in time. And you, each one of you, are the result of those prayers. 
You're the product of those prayers. Everything you've been through is equipping you along that wall. You need to ponder on that statement. Generations of the saints before you have prayed that the right people would be here in this moment and in this time, and God has put you here as an answer to their prayers. You talk about the remnant. That's what we are. And God's raising up remnant people all over the place. And that's an honor. And it's a privilege. And it's a responsibility. And I'm going to quote one of my husband's favorite movies. From Spider-Man. It's a paraphrase. With great honor comes great responsibility. With great power comes great responsibility. With great alignment comes great responsibility. There are people out there that need revival. We're in a crock pot as God's continuing to refine us. It's not an instant. It doesn't matter. It just means we got to keep choosing to stay in the fire. Jamie talked about story, and she mentioned this briefly. There's a, um, a tradition not many of us know or remember, but um, when a great thing would happen with somebody, they would take their staff and they would engrave a mark to remind them of what happened on that staff. So, for example, Abraham might have something that represents Isaac and, and the promise on his staff, right? Well, Moses would have, like, water split in the middle, maybe some frogs over here, and there's, you know, all these wonderful things that happened. Well, think about this. The staff becomes a testimony. What happened with the army when Moses raised his testimony? They were victorious. When he didn't bring forth his testimony, they were losing. So you got to lean on your staff once in a while, folks. Your testimony matters. Your story matters. I don't care what you've been through. And please don't hear my heart. That, that doesn't mean I'm callous towards what you've been through. I know some of it's been painful. I, I get that. What I'm saying is it doesn't really matter what you've been through. What matters is where you're going with it. I don't care if you killed someone. I don't care if you've stolen. I don't care if you've watched porn. I don't care if you've done porn. I don't care. What I care is... What is God got for you? And how much will you be willing to embrace that? How much will you be willing to take what you walked through and make that a testimony so someone else can get saved? How much are you willing to say, okay, my embarrassment doesn't matter anywhere near as much as that person? Because he is calling us up to be an army. And there's a lot of people sitting at home right now going, I don't know if it's worth going outside. And if that's you, I'm not, I'm not, you got to do what God tells you to do. I'm not judging anybody. So if you're hearing judgment from me, I repent. That's not what I'm trying to do. So if I, again, I just want to say this. If I offend anybody, I'm a little fired up tonight. So if I offend anybody, please forgive me in advance. I ask you to forgive me right now. That's not my intent. Okay. My intent is to fire, isn't to offend you, is to exhort you. You need to hear the call. You've got to hear the call. The season that we're in, this is 5780. 80 is pay, right? Pay is from the mouth. If you were here a year ago when we talked about the, uh, the, the head of the year, everything that's happened this year was prophesied that day. We talked about turmoil, uh, 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 turmoil and tribulations coming this year. This decade, this pay decade, is the kingdom of God saying, choose. Choose and declare it. That's what the mouth part of it. See, the pay symbol has a little bet in it. Bet means house. Right? So pay is shaped like a mouth, and inside the mouth is a house. And inside that, there's this little t 
Kadesh Mark, I believe is what it's called. And that's, they say that's a seed or the fire, the spark. We talked about that a year ago before any of this happened. The spark is in the house, which is in your mouth. If you declare it, you can have it. You're the spark for your house. You want fire? You want the fire of God to come down? Say so. Are you willing to do it publicly? Are you willing to go out and declare to all the world, this is who I am. This is what I believe. And if you don't like it, you're welcome. I saw today... But last month, the Supreme Court agreed to take a case about a young black man in a Georgia university who got in trouble for preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ on campus. Now, this is what's cool about it. He took him to court, and they removed all the reasons they, he got into trouble, but they haven't stopped the case because they want the court to rule and say, no, 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 you need to declare this is wrong. Because what ends up happening, see, is they take him to court and then the school changes the rules, and they say, oh, it's moot, so they toss it. No, we need a ruling. We need a judgment. We need a judgment. Now, this, this is what's cool. This is what struck out to me. The DA in Georgia, who was defending this case, the original paperwork said that preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ equates to fighting words. Now, you got to understand, we have free speech, but you're not allowed to yell fire in a movie house, right? You're not, supposed to incent, you're, not, you're not supposed to have incendiary voices that could get people hurt, right? We, we don't want to create panics. We're not, it's not okay for me to come up in front of Reese and go, you're a booger head. I don't like you. And get her so mad she finally hits me. I started that. Right? Yeah. Unless you're Antifa, you're not allowed to do that. And he said, that's preaching the gospel's fighting words. And I was like, look what the enemy just revealed. Yeah. Darn right, it's fighting words. This is a peaceful protest, but we're taking hell by storm. Amen. The violent take heaven by force. That doesn't mean I want violence on my fellow man, but I am tired of the garbage. And we need to step up and say so. Pay means choose. Pay means declare. We've got to get up and be the army that God wants and says, this stops now. Amen. And it doesn't work in your prayer closet. I'm not saying prayers are bad. I'm not saying don't go to your prayer closet. But I'm saying it's time we need to get out of our prayer closet and let our prayers be heard in the street. Amen. The, you need to declare before all of heaven and earth who and what you are and what you believe in. That's what revival is. That's what awakening is. That's what will happen. We're changing the atmosphere in this nation. We're not alone in it. It feels like it some days, but we're not. There are other little places just like this all over this nation that are standing up and saying, enough of this garbage. We're Christians, and we've got nothing to be ashamed of. And the gospel of Jesus Christ is worth hearing his work is worth celebrating. We will worship him. You don't like it? Don't listen. I don't care. You mean you're fighting for their soul? That too. But you know what? Not only am I fighting for their soul, I'm fighting for my own. It's selfish, and I admit it. But if I'm not willing to stand up for it, I don't have it. If I'm not willing to stand up and say, this is who I am and this is what I want, I won't get the promise of it. You've probably seen someone come up here and lay a $5 bill. Somebody wants to come and get it and nobody gets up to get it. Why? Because no one wants to come up and get it. They're embarrassed to take the $5 bill until some kid says, oh, okay, I'll grab it. Finally, you get what the kingdom's about. Be willing to stand up in front of a crowd and say, I want it. We talk about the book of Acts. And we talk about how great it will be to have those miracle signs and wonders in our age. But we forget. As much as we want to say, I want to have a miracle, none of us want to say, I need a miracle. I love the story. I want to say Acts 15-ish, 14, something like that, when Paul 
was preaching and he had trolls coming from Antioch and Iconium, or I don't remember exactly what cities they were. These trolls came up and gave him a hard time and incited the people against him. And they stoned him to death and dragged him out of the city and left him for dead. Paul had one miracle left as an option. He had a bad day. The apostles gathered around and prayed over him, and he stood up. Now, this is the part I really like. He went back into town. This had to be a fun moment. Hi, I'm the dead guy. Now, this is not a zombie apocalypse. God believes in life. But I'm sure these guys needed to change their pants. And what he did next is he said... I'm going to your town. Thank you for the testimony. And he did. And he went to their town, and it says he did wondrous, miraculous works. He shut them down. He got in their face and said, you're not stopping the kingdom. Now, that's not passive kumbaya time. But if we're calling in acts, we need to be prepared for that. If you don't want that, I think you're in the wrong church. We're going there. We're calling it down. We're asking for it. The purpose of an army is to take ground. Nothing changes till boots hit the ground. There's no such thing as, a, as an, a, a, an Air Force fighter of faith. God doesn't ask you to be in the Navy. He doesn't ask you to ride a tank. He asks you to walk with a sword and a shield. You're not a warrior either. You're a soldier. A simple soldier. You fight with the men and women next to you. If you ever see what a phalanx does, the shield of faith, if it's in front of you, you can't use your sword. The shield guards the man next to you. That's why it's so much easier to believe in somebody else than yourself. Because the faith is for them. I believe you're getting healed. Me, I'm not so sure. You guys believe for me. But it's so much easier to say, no, you're getting it. I can tell you're getting it. I know you're getting it. Because that's what faith is for. It's for one another. If you don't have the faith, you need to be here. There are people at home, I'm I'm just going to say this. You need to listen to the Holy Spirit, do what he tells you. But you know you need to be here. And if you're not, you need to have a talk with God about it. Get it right. Nothing changes till boots hit the ground. Nothing. Watch the difference from Gulf War I and Gulf War II. Gulf War I, we absolutely, completely destroyed the ability of Iraq's ability to fight. I mean, it, within three days, they were hiding their airplanes, not launching. Okay? We... <laughs> But we never put boots on the ground and Saddam stayed in power. The powers and principalities will remain in power until boots hit the ground and we move in it. That's why he raised the Ezekiel army as an army of infantry to take the ground. When boots are there, they change the political affiliation of the land. If we stand up and march, we get this country back. If we stay in our prayer closet, we don't. If you're at home and you heard that and God quickened your spirit, get up and walk. If you're here, get up and walk. All of creation is waiting for a manifestation of the kingdom of God. All of it. The rocks will cry out if we don't. That manifestation is supposed to come through you. Not me, not Risa. I love Risa. But you. It's going to come from each and every single one of us. Each of us are going to have a different manifestation of the kingdom of God. It's going to come, and it's going to come hard. It's going to come strong. It's going to come loud, and it's going to come to everyone. They may not like it. But as my wife said when she got a little ticked off in Secure, you can kneel before Jesus, or you can run before Jesus, but you will have an encounter with Jesus. We need to make known who we are. 
We need to make known what we know and, more importantly, who we know. We talk about bringing the kingdom down, that we want God to bring heaven to earth, that we want the kingdom manifest in this house and in this world right here. I'm going to tell you the secret to it right now. All you got to do is read your Bible, and you'll see this over and over and over and over again. The key to the kingdom is relationship. The definition of the kingdom is relationship. God defines his kingdom by the nature of our relationship with him. The kingdom of God is not defined by his strength or his power. It's not. He is omniscient, omnipotent, omnipresent, which means he doesn't need to come down. He's here. He knows we want him here because he's omnipotent, and he can be here anytime he wants. Right? Right? Satan took one-third of the angels with him, right? Which means we've got God, who's omnipotent, omniscient, omnipresent, and two-thirds of the angels, which means if this is just about power, the fight would have been over a long time ago because Satan's outnumbered two to one, and the king could do it alone. Yes, Satan's an idiot. He's fighting a losing battle, and he knows it. So if it's not about God's power, if it's not about that, what is it about? It's about our relationship with him. It's about our hearts. Our hearts. And his. And his, absolutely. That's all that matters. That's how he defines his kingdom. That's how he brings it up. If you read Job chapter 1, he defines it. I used to hate that book because it seems so unfair But once I understood that book, I was like, oh, my God, I get the rest of the Bible now. It all makes sense now because there's God in his court walking around, talking to everybody. And Satan walks in and says, yo, Satan, what you been doing? And he says, I've been walking around the earth going back and forth to and fro. Did you check out my servant Job? The stud Job, man. He's a good guy. He is good in all his ways, good and perfect in all his ways. He declares in front of Satan and the rest of heaven that Job is without a problem. He is sinless. He's a good man and does good in all of his ways. There is no punishment involved. Zero. And then Satan challenges God. And he says, well, that's because you bought him. Yeah, I'd, I'd like you too if you gave me all the gifts you've had. I mean, look, he's got a great wife. He's got kids. He's rich. He's wealthy. Yeah, of course, you, you purchase his affection with your power. And God did the most amazing thing. He put the reputation of his kingdom in the hands of a man who had no idea that all hell is going to come against him. And he said, you can do anything you want to him, but you can't take his life. And he took everything. He didn't even have a pot. He used a broken pot to scrape his boils. And yet he said, but I will not forsake God. There's your key. There's your key right there. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Hey, we've got this furnace turned up awfully high. Do you think your God will save you now? Well, even if he doesn't. We're not forsaking him. And guess who dances in the fire with him? Hey, guys, we just stoned you, beat you up, and put you in jail. What are you going to do? We're going to praise and worship until the chains fall off and the doors open. Read your Bible. If you're willing to double down, you bring the kingdom. Because God says, yes, you define my kingdom. Now I can make this my kingdom. When the bovine scatology hits your circular air distribution device, will you double down and declare him God and king no matter what? (laughs) It will happen, and that's the test. If you're not having fun, you're not doing it right.
He's asking you to double down, guys. I know a lot of you have got a lot of stuff going down. Trust me. I feel it too. You're not alone in that because that's the season. This is the season for like, I don't want to declare this over anybody, but this is a season of Job-like stuff. Let's, come on. COVID-19, murder hornets. Uh, what do we got? Godzilla coming up? To, 20, 2020 is nuts. It's the first year of the decade of pay. Just get used to it, folks. It's a roller coaster ride. But remember, at the end, Job is no longer the servant. Job is the friend. And all those friends who said, well, obviously you did something to offend God for all this stuff to come up to you. Your sins are clearly the problem. Your past is why this is here. Uh, you obviously have some sort of secret sin you're not confessing to everybody. See, we know. Shut up. I spent years in churches telling me that. It's garbage. That's not the gospel. It never has been. It never will be. I don't care what your sin is. He died for it. Do you believe the book or not? Read the end of it. We win. This is about a victorious church arising, not a lazy church arising, not a, oh, we'll get through this church arising. We're going to have victory and we're going to have it big. Do you know what victory means? I got to pull this up. Because I want to read this right. In, uh, I looked up victory in Romans 8.2, right? Yeah, excuse me, 8.37. Yet even in the midst of all these things, we triumph over them all. For God has made us to be more than conquerors, right? And we have demonstrated, and his demonstrated love for our glorious victory over everything. Now, the passion has a note on this. It says, clearly implied in the text with the Greek word hupernaiko. The God of love gives us a glorious hyper victory. More than can be described or contained in one word. God's love and grace has made us hyper conquerors. Empowered to be unrivaled more than any match for any foe. If you read it in Strong's, hypernaiko says, beyond conquer. Exceeding conquer, being more than a conquer, super conquer, who is completely and overwhelmingly victorious. The intensive prefix hyper adds the idea of surpassing victory, a preeminent conqueror. This is not, oh, we eke that one out. This is the blowout of blowouts. This is the epic beatdown you've wanted to see all your life. This is the enemy getting his teeth kicked in. Do you believe it? Will you walk it? Will you declare it? Will you stand in it? He's calling us so much higher than we've ever been called before. I know it's hard. I know it's tiring. I know it's difficult. But the test of an army is how it fights when it's tired. And we will be conquerors. Amen. Absolutely victorious conquerors. Tonight is Fire Tunnel Friday. So we're going to have the fire team, the pastors, and everybody else come up here, and we're going to go through a fire tunnel. And we're going to declare that we're leaving the old stuff aside. Now listen to me. I need you to hear my heart in this. Like Jameis said, some of this old stuff, even if it's bad stuff, we kind of hold on to it like a teddy bear because we're comfortable with it. You got to flush it. Some of us are gold nuggets with dirt sticking to us like a rock, right? And you, it, you just got to get that dirt off. If it means melting the gold so all the dirt comes off, then let's melt the gold and get all the dirt off. I know you're comfortable with it. I know you've had it there all your life. God will fill the hole. But let it go. If God's going to give you a new car, you've got to clear out the garage. If you won't clear out the garage, there's no room for the new. You want a new wineskin? Empty out the old. It's time to have a party. Let's empty our wineskins. Celebrate the gifts that God gave us in the past. And make room for the new. If you need to mourn it a little bit, that's fine. 
Because sometimes those, those things that we mourn that we have to live up are things that are precious and special to us. If you didn't mourn them, you wouldn't be honoring them. That's okay. The key is to let it go. Make room for that new. Make room for that space. That's what we're going to bring in tonight. And team, we've got some music. We're going to play it on our speakers so you can, after we're done streaming here, you guys don't have to worry about it. We're going to be playing some music. We're going to be playing it loud. We're going to be having some fun. All right? You are welcome to stay as long as you need tonight to get rid of this. This space is for you. But we're going to set up a fire tunnel right here, and we're going to bring it down.